Hey friends, today we're gonna go over the Q output in Ableton. The Q output is used for, uh, the most common use that I see it being used for is listening to the click track and being able to queue up different, uh, be able to preview different samples over here in your browser, uh, so on and so forth. But there's a lot more uses of the Q output than just that. And we're gonna go over all those different things and, and how you can really navigate your set um, in a way that uh, keeps it nuanced and fresh and doesn't play every single thing that you need to preview to the crowd. Um, so let's go ahead. I want to focus on this little section. This is the output section. In order to be able to display what I'm going to talk about, we're going to switch. We only have two channels to work with, the left channel and the right channel, when you're w listening to this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose for my Q output, channel 2, and for my master output, I'm going to choose channel 1. And the reason that is is so now when I play the clock, you can hear the click track coming out of the right side, and then any of my audio will come out of the left side. Right? Now, so you understand, you could do this, you could do this however you want. Your master output commonly is output one and two from your audio interface, and then if you have three and four, or five and six, any of those other audio, uh, if you have extra audio outputs, most interfaces do, you can send the Q output to those. Um, and commonly, you'll have to figure out how to route your headphones to whatever um, output pair you want to choose. If you can't see output pairs, you just go, you click on this area right here, and you go to configure. And right here in this area, this is where you configure your outputs and your inputs. You can switch them on or off. So if you don't, if you have an interface that has multiple outputs and you don't see them, just make sure that they're clicked on in here. Okay, but for our purposes, we're going to keep the master on the left channel and the cue out on the right. That way you can differentiate what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the easiest part. Your click track, the uh, metronome, I should say, is up here, and the volume for it is right here. So that's the, that's that's simple. Okay, uh, everything that you're hearing down channel two, we're just gonna imagine that the crowd can't hear that, and that's coming to your headphones. And everything you're hearing out of one is what the crowd hears. Okay, so you know, I start my set, the click track is going. I'm gonna like, all right, so what uh, clip do I want to do? I'll start this hi hat loop, and now the crowd can hear the hi hat loop. Okay. So let's get into the first thing that you can do with the, with the Q output, uh, as long as you have, and, and, and this option won't appear unless you have uh, different outputs routed to the Q and the master out. So I'm playing my clock, so I can hear the click track in the right, and something I want to do is I want to preview the, uh, the drum track that I want to use. So I'm going to mute this, it's muted, okay? And I'm going to go over here and, and click on the solo button, and all of a sudden it's going to say Q. And if you notice, the different areas underneath where solo normally is are now headphone tracks. All right, so what that means is that now I can preview in the right channel, which is the uh, my headphone channel that we're imagining, I can now listen to things without the crowd hearing it, so long as either the volume slider is down or the track is muted. Okay, so I'm going to play this. Now I can preview these drum tracks with as long as the Q button is on. So I'm going to preview this these drum tracks. Okay, so maybe I don't like that one here, this one. Okay, so when I'm ready, that sounds good. I'm gonna click this one. Now, do you notice how it sounds like it's down the middle? That's because it's playing out of the left channel and the right channel equally. So I can take it out of my cue mix by just hitting the cue. Okay, so now the crowd is hearing that drum beat and my hi-hats, okay? So I'm gonna go to these other tracks. Okay, I'm gonna do the same process. They're muted right now. I'm gonna choose which Rhodes track I want, so I'm gonna launch this one when it comes around. That's a pretty cool one. I'll try the other one. Okay, so that's the one I want. So when I'm ready to, to unmute, just hit it on the... Okay, then I'm gonna turn my cue output off. All right, now let's do it a different way. If I have this track turned all the way up and the uh, also the uh, mute switch thrown uh, so that it's on, um, I can actually pull the slider all the way down and still get full volume for my cue mix. So I'm gonna listen. Or maybe this one. doing is we're previewing this audio, the crowd can't hear it yet. So when I want the crowd to hear it, 
you know, I could do one of two things. I can either turn the cue off. It's still playing, whether the cue's on or off, but the cue is just how I hear it. I'm just sending it to my cue mix, you get it? Okay, so now what I can do is I can dynamically sweep it in. Right? Alright, so that's how you're using the cue mix to listen to your clips and figure out when you when you which one you want and when you want it to come in. It's it's all control for you. Now the next thing I'm obviously gonna show you, because every time I'm gonna show you this, is MIDI mapping. Everything that you want to do with the cue, uh, the cue overall volume, the cue switch, turning it on and off, can all be mapped to MIDI. The volume sliders, the 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 mute on and off switch. So so I'm not gonna get into exactly uh, all the different uh, ways that you could do this, but as you can see, all these controls are readily available. You don't have to use the mouse to do this, is what I'm saying. Okay, you can turn your click track on and off in your ears with MIDI. Okay, it's all MIDI MIDI mappable, everything. So so what's important is that you are, you know, wrapping your mind around around this to the degree where. When you have your whole set set up and you have all these different clips and you want to do this, all this other stuff, you can turn these devices on and off uh, and in, your, in one mix and then play it for the crowd in the other mix. Okay, so, so something else I wanted to point out is if you make a nice collection of sounds that are also available over here, sounds that maybe could bail you out of certain situations, uh, maybe you're trying to add some nuance, maybe you have a set that goes a certain way almost every time and you want to try something else, you can also do this. You can play so that our click track is still going down the second channel. I'm going to take that out. I have some of these other loops. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these drums. Alright, so our crowd is just hearing no drums. I'm going to preview some of these. this one. Or I'll put it in this in this track. Actually, no, I'm going to make a new audio track for these. I forgot these are audio. So if I click on it, what's going to happen is as long as the clock is playing, it's going to launch these drum loops uh, based on the quantization settings that I have. So I'll listen to another one. I like this one. So I'm going to drop it in and launch it. Now the crowd is hearing that. I want to add another layer to it, so I'll just listen to some of these other ones. Okay. I'll make a new track for that. And remember, I can always turn my, my, my cue thing on, and as long as either this is muted or this volume slider is down, the crowd won't hear it, so I can launch it whenever I want. I want to sweep this one dynamically, so I'll launch it. Here in my cue mix, I'll take it out of my cue mix. Now I'm just gonna start blending it in slow. Okay. So these are all effective ways to use the, the cue mix. Now the last thing I want to talk about is something a little more advanced, but I, I think this is gonna be really easy for you to get. The cue mix is one way that you can send a click track to yourself out a certain output. You also can use uh, an entirely different output uh, from any audio track that you want. You can send audio down all the different outputs of your interface uh, in different places. And I'm sure most of you knew that, but you know, I, I just want to show you this because this is how you know uh, you can you can really set up some complex things. This also potentially you don't like this sound. I can tell you, I've heard this insane click track for years and years and years and it's starting to drive me nuts you know you can make other click tracks as audio clips so this is a little uh, click track I made with some other sounds right and if I wanted to send that to the cue output I don't I I could hit this cue button right here and you know as long as this is down it's gonna come out that side right Another thing that I could do is I could say I mean I could just skip this entire system and say audio to external out output to. Now it's just going to play out there. So you can make custom click tracks uh, and and even even better than that, you can make custom click tracks that count down uh, or, or give musicians that you're sending it to instructions like get ready for the change, three, two, one, and actually in this clip and send that to their ears, okay? 
Um, so if you have a bunch of scenes here and they're named different parts, you could send those different parts down and, uh, you know, uh, give them instructions. Uh, then the crowd will never hear those instructions. Only the, the, the artist will hear that uh, cue output. So if you have a band and the, the, you, need, you need them to hit a change, it's just as simple as writing them into this aux track. Okay, so you're making custom click tracks. You can do custom things with um, these aux outputs. The whole idea of this is just try to wrap your mind around the fact that that routing audio in Ableton is really easy, and you can route it to all these different places, and you can you can seriously help uh, the performance of your live set and do really amazing things by not revealing the the pulse of the music to the crowd. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. If you feel like you want to, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the, the little notification bell, and that'll let you know when other videos are coming out. If you want to support my channel, there's a Patreon link. Love you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Thank you.